So let's revisit this concept of static files. Static files are basically all the files which you as a developer ship together with your Python Django application, which are not your templates or your Python code. So things like CSS or maybe JavaScript if you have that, or images like this max PNG file, which is not a user upload, but an image I already ship together with my application, I as a developer. Such static files, of course, are an important part of our website. And as I mentioned in one of the previous lectures, Django in production does not automatically serve them because when it comes to serving such files, there is a lot of optimization potential, which is why Django out of the box doesn't take care about them because it does not serve them optimally. The same is true for uploaded files because once uploaded, these are also just static files. Now, there are a couple of important considerations here. This static files ders key, which we added here, that is important for Django to be aware of the location where your static files are stored. It by default will always look into your app folders and look for a static folder there, as mentioned earlier in the course, but it will also check all the directories you list here. That's why in our application, it will also pick up the static folder in our root project folder. Now, why is it important for Django to be aware of these locations of your static files? Because during development, it served them and for production, it's able to collect them for you. That's now the interesting part. For serving static files in production, you wanna in the end collect all the static files from all your different apps you might have and move them into one folder in your project, a folder which we have yet to create, which is then served by either Django if you add the specific code or by some dedicated static host. And as I mentioned, we'll have a look at all these options in detail throughout this section. Now, that collection part is something we haven't done until now because during development with the run server command, we didn't need to because there Django did automatically collect and serve all static files. For production, we will need to manually collect them though. And now we could go around and manually try to copy and paste all our static files into one folder in our project. Whilst we could do this, it would be very cumbersome and it's not how this is intended to be done. Instead, there is a new option we should add to the settings py file and that's the static root option. Here, you should specify a folder name and a folder location of your choice. In this case, I'll go for baster slash static files. And this setting looks a lot like this setting, doesn't it? Because it's in the end the same idea. For uploads, we had to specify this anyways, because there it was not about Django collecting anything, but about users uploading files. But for static files, we need to specify static root so that we can run a specific Django command, which I'll show you in a second, which will automatically collect all the static files from the different parts of our project and automatically move them into this folder here then. And that will then be important because then we'll have all the files in one folder and we can then start serving that folder, however we do that. We should keep the static URL around and I'll keep it at slash static because that will then later be important for serving these static files, just as the media URL is. Now, you could choose a different name here now, because in the end, that's then just uh, the, the mapping between the URL the browser sends and the folder where the files live, but I will stick to static here, but you could use a different name if you wanted to. Now, there's one thing you don't wanna do. You don't wanna use one and the same folder for your static files and the media files, so the user uploaded files. Technically, you could, because as I said, in the end, all these files are just static files in the end. An uploaded image is no different uh, than an image you as a developer provide right from the start. But there is a security problem if you have a shared folder. Your static files, so the files you as a developer add to your website, could contain JavaScript files, for example. So JavaScript is a language which we don't use here, but which runs in the browser and which can execute code in the browser. 
as long as that is your code as a developer, it is not problematic because you wrote that code, you know what it does. If you have a shared static folder where user uploads go into as well, users could find a way of uploading their own JavaScript code with malicious code potentially into that static folder and you would start serving it to all your users all over the world. Now that's a security risk and that's why we want to have split folders so that our files, which we as a developer provide, can't be overwritten by user uploads. That's why we have separate folders. And with that, we prepared those static file settings. Now we need to open up the terminal and run a specific command. We need to use the manage py file and run the collect static command. That's another command built into Django. And this command will now go ahead, collect all the static files, so all the predefined images and CSS and JavaScript files and so on, which it finds in our project, and it creates a static files folder because of this setting here, in which we now have all those files. It also includes files from built-in uh, apps, like in this case, the admin app. These are all the files for the admin uh, interface, for the admin panel, which we also include in this project. And these files should not be edited by you. These are the collected files. You should still work on the input folders. So in the folders we worked on throughout this entire course. And whenever you then changed your static files and you want to redeploy, you can rerun Python 3 manage py collect static and it will collect your static files again. Now here, since I already did that before, it asks me if, it, if I want to override the existing files and I Entry yes, though it actually didn't copy anything here because it noticed that none of these files changed. But if you did change something, so if I, for example, change something in app CSS and I simply add a new empty line and I run this again, now you see that one static file was changed and that's this app CSS file. So that's what you can do and what you should do before you deploy. Collect all your static files.